a count on two investigation. School is officially back in session, but for many, with the excitement of the new school year, comes some safety concerns. The school bells ringing on the heels of two mass shootings. Count on two investigator Sophia Arizozo breaks down a bill that would make making threats a crime, giving officers the ability to arrest people before any damage is done. Attention all units getting information on their shooting STEM school. This year, there have been four school shootings across the nation, raising questions about what could have been done to prevent the loss of lives. When a child goes to school, he or she should be absolutely safe. According to the U.S. Secret Service, 93% of the attackers in mass shootings during 2018 made threatening or concerning communications prior to the tragedies, but officers said they often had their hands tied. A bill introduced by Senator Sandy Sen could change that in our state. She says it could have stopped the Charleston Church shooter or the Townville shooter back in 2016 from taking the lives of 11 people. Both made online threats. They both could have been prevented had our officers had any ability to detain the Parkland shooter. The sheriff was called out to their house like 47 times. Cruz, the Stoneman Douglas school shooter, made threats as early as February of 2016 on social media, along with photos of weapons. All that he put out there, and there's nothing the officers could do. The bill would allow law enforcement officials to detain suspects based on threats to schools, churches, parks, or public gathering places. As a condition of bond, they need to undergo a one hour mental health evaluation. So it's not anything strenuous, but it also gives our officers time to get the computers of the people to figure out whether they're serious about this or not. Former South Carolina Attorney General Charlie Condon says the focus on mental health makes this beneficial legislation. The intervention early on with a mental health professional evaluating someone who has run afoul of these statutes, I think is a tremendous improvement in our existing laws. As for those who make threats with no real intent behind them, Condon says the penalties are reasonable. Most of these people will not end up with long prison sentences, if any prison sentence at all, particularly when they're family court cases and looking out for the best interests of juveniles. Both Condon and Sen say this will serve as a necessary learning lesson about the seriousness of threatening violence. For others that can look at this and learn that, hey, I can't get on whatever new social media app that we may not know about today and threaten somebody. Penalties range depending on the number of offenses as well as if that threat actually resulted in violence. I've listed all those details on our website, countonto.com. This bill passed in the Senate 30 to 10. It's currently stalled in the House Judiciary Committee where it's been for four months. Reporting in studio, Sophia Rizzoza, Count On Two.